Hmm? This is CJ. Walaikum Yes. Go ahead. Go on, yes. Yes. Uh, how old were you when you accepted Islam, and what year was it? Do you remember? Um, when I finally accepted Islam, I was eighteen. Nineteen. No, you remember the year? Nineteen ninety-nine. Yeah. Who introduced you to Islam? Rap music. <laughs> it's for real, it's it. It's rap music. Why you chose to accept this song though? What was the reason behind it? Like, um, I don't know. Like, I, I got introduced to Islam when I was in the fifth grade. So when I first started listening to rap music, so there was like all these rappers. Like what Beckham, rappers you talking about? Okay. Um, Rakim. Because you was talking about poor righteous teachers or something. Poor righteous teachers, all of them. Big okay. Daddy King, I, I looked up to all brand Nubian. Now, I didn't know that they wasn't Muslim. Well, I want to say they wasn't Muslim, but they thought they were Muslim. They, I thought that was Islam. So I, I grew up listening to that stuff. I was big, like this in the late 80s, early 90s. So I, I was um, I was big on, I had read about um, Malcolm, Malcolm X. Right. By any means, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so... When I would listen to the music and they were talking the same stuff that Malcolm was like, that was a big thing in the eighties, the late eighties and nineties. So, like X Clan and Karis One, all of them, they talked about, you know, Islam. So rap got a connection with you accepting Islam. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I was, I was, I was introduced by them, but it wasn't. I was in the sixth grade when I had to teach. You know, I, you know, I used to go to um, Catholic school. Mm -hmm. I used to go to St. Peter's Catholic School, and our teacher, my sixth grade teacher, her name was Mrs. Fletcher, and <clears throat> we had to study like world religions and stuff. So we we talked about Buddhism, we talked about Christianity. Well, of course, we was at a Catholic school, but we talked about different branches of Christianity, like Baptism, I mean Baptist and Pentecostal. And so when we got to the section on the Islam, mm -hmm. we did a real long, like we I actually learned the Sirah of the Prophet Islam in the sixth grade. In before, Catholicism. Yeah, when mm -hmm. I was in, in Catholic school, I learned. And the only difference was, like, back then the teacher told me that it wasn't true. She said his story wasn't true. So that's that's she, probably my okay. what really caught my interest because his story, like, I used to get a grade in religion, like, in sixth grade. So I had to learn the story of Jesus Christ, they sign, like, over and over, over again. So when I first got introduced to the story of the prophet, they um, his story resembled Prophet Jesus, like said, and I didn't like. I was asking my teacher, like, "Yo, why? Like, that story is very similar." And she said, "Yeah, but it's not true." So why even say it then? Right? Why even mention we it? Had to, we had to learn. Oh, uh, okay. Right. You know, it was it was one of the things. Like, you know, when you get to a certain age, they want you to know about other cultures and other religions. Right. This because it was a Catholic school. They told me it wasn't true. Now that I'm older, so I went sixth grade learning. That's the you know the Sarah, but she told me it wasn't true, and it wasn't until I got out of high school. So my first year out of high school is when I accepted Islam. But from sixth grade to then, I just studied. You know, I studied different things, mm -hmm. and I went back to church, and I tried to get like like my family grew like I kind of grew up going to church, but my family isn't really religious. But when I was in high school, I tried to get ingratiated with the church again. So I tried, and I remember I used to go to church, and now, you ever go to church? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, <laughs> so I come from the same background. Yeah, we would go to church, and they would say, um, all right, now bow your head and pray, right, and be silent. So put your head down and go pray. Right. And I'm really praying, like, hard, like, God, please do this and give me that, whatever it was. And then... Mm -hmm. Halfway through your first prayer, then you start hearing the organs and like, dun, 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 dun. and then it's like, damn, these niggas is trying to guide my prayer. That's yeah. how I felt. Like, why you guide me? Like, let me pray to God on my own. And I didn't like that. Uh -huh. and so that's one of the things that made me go back to studying Islam again, or, or just being interested. And then another thing, I was working in a barber shop, and you know Mikael, right? So yeah. Growing up, he was the Muslim that I, like, he was the first yeah, real Muslim. Yeah, Muslim. Yeah, like, okay. before I used to know people in the Nation of Islam and people, you know, um, 
they were like five percent of his appearance right. part of the um yeah. What was the I guy come from that era. I know what you're talking about. York. So I didn't know. I thought that was his thing. So when I started working in a barber shop, this is in high school. I met Mikhail. I met Brother Tyler Dean. I met. Um, I worked for Tyler. I met Hadi. Mm -hmm. um, so all these different Muslims that were like real Sunni Muslims, I met and I, you know, they, they were very impressionable. On, you know, left, left oh, so, okay. impression on me. So that's. I tried going to church again and then. That praying situation, that's what made me say, you know, I'm, I'm going to start learning this same again because mm. I was around them. And they they, they they were good brothers who, like, you know, they... they Represented this time, well? Yeah, they mm. did. I mean, for what I thought of it. All right, you know? so uh, uh, how, from you being around that, right, you accepting Islam, how, how has Islam changed your life? Like, what's some of the things you altered from being previously to accepting Islam? Um, or do you notice a change? Yeah, big change. I, I didn't, when I was Christian, like most Christians, I, I thought that, um, you know, my belief was things that you do. You ever hear people, they, they say, yeah, acts. Like, yeah they, they think your acts are your belief. And it's, I understand now being a Muslim and, you know, learning fit taught me that, too. Because when I first took Shahada, I didn't learn fit maybe until, like, seven, eight years later or six years later. So, but knowing that my belief and my action, my actions have to represent my beliefs and not the other way around. Right. As a Christian, I used to, you know, you know, people say, oh, Christians do X, Y, and Z. Muslims do. It's not about what you do. It's about what you believe in your heart first. Mm -hmm. So, that's Aikida. So, if I... I learned Aikida properly, and then I learned that my actions, how I pray, or, you know, what I do, what I don't do, is all based on my my belief first. So when I was a Christian, I used to just think that everything was, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, in whatever religion it is. And most, I think most people, they look at religion like that. Like, you ever hear people yeah. say, I, I'll never be a Muslim because, you know, I like to eat pork, or I, I can't... Um, I don't want to pray five times a day. It's like they always look at the things. That, the rules, yeah. The rules. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the rules. And I've learned, I mean, it is about the rules, but it's not. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is your belief first. And so, like, what changed my life back to real depression is, you know, having children. Like, as I wasn't raised Muslim. So now my children, you know, you know, they both have different experiences, but like my son, for instance, he was raised in Islam, and I didn't really beat him down with Islam, but he's raised around it, and to watch him at his age to choose to be a Muslim, like he could choose to not do any of these things, but he chooses to do so because of his beliefs. So mm -hmm. that's like a, you know, that's a big life change for me because I didn't think that that would ever happen. And then, you know, you know, people talk to you when they say, all right, well, you don't, you don't have to do that. Nobody is making you, you know, and it's like, nah, I'm choosing to do this because of my belief. You mm. know? And and, I, and I'm happy to do some of the things. Some things I struggle with, but, you know, for the most part, like, this is my way of life. And, and that's the difference between when I was, when I was a Christian, I was never Catholic, but I was probably Baptist. But even being in the Baptist church, being in um, Catholic schools, my mother is a, um, is, is a, is a minister. Too. So, you know, my mom is very close to me. And all these things influenced me, but I, I never did any of those things because I was choosing to. It was more like, you know... You feel like it was forced on you? No, nah, not that it was forced, but you just grow... Like, almost like a tradition. Like, we do these things out of tradition. A ritualistic, you mean? Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, when I, when I first started studying the same in high school... Like, really studying it, I, I, I somebody showed me one time, I said, yo, you know, we weren't, our people weren't Christians in slavery. Like, right. Christianity was Well, Alex Haley proved that in his book, Roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. See, I didn't know that until, like, I didn't see Roots until I was in high school. So then when, you know, you read these things, I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, all those things had, like, an effect on me. And I said, oh, well, well do I, not that I felt like I was, brainwash or anything but you had to look at like all right do i do these things 
because I want to do them mm -hmm. or because it's just what the tradition is in my family. And when I asked my family, I learned that that's what my family just did out of tradition. They didn't really... And they I didn't they, question it. Yeah, they never questioned it. It was mm -hmm. just, this is what we do. And when yeah. I asked why, just like, this is what we do. Like, we go to church. And we, yeah. You know, we, we do Christmas. And and that used to confuse me, too, because I come from a family, and I'm not trying to say nothing bad about my family, but my family isn't, like, they're not really super religious Christians either. So they're, they're the kind of people who... And they're good people. Like, I'm not bashing or nothing but you know they drink and go to church and yeah. out and like like most people do so like, it, yeah. it, we're balanced but they don't think it's okay when I became a Muslim and I learned like our right, Muslims we sin too and I might do something that I ain't got no business doing but I'm going to repent and Allah is looking for me to repent and ask him for forgiveness mm -hmm. and I, I never really knew I would read about repentance when I was going to Catholic school, but I never knew, I mean, we know where everybody repented, like, I wasn't ever taught how to repent, oh, yeah, you see what I'm right. saying, like, we, we just, it wasn't a form of it, mm, it was no form, and even, yeah. like, when I, when I first took Shahada, I didn't, I mean, I wanted to be a Muslim, because I wanted, like, these people I looked up to, I wanted to be like them, like, I met Muslim men who were just, I, at the time, I thought were like very had very exemplary character. Yeah, that's the same thing, right? But but I didn't know. I didn't understand like why I had to pray or why I had to pray in Arabic mm -hmm. or why five times. And I would ask questions, and people didn't really have answers. So, you know, the ritualistic part of Islam, I didn't understand why. And but once I learned why. It's like, oh, hey, Allah is deserving of that. Makes sense. So it's not just, all right, we believe. Like, I have friends who are, like, Christian or other religions and stuff. And they say, well, how come, how come you have to pray? You know, why you got to get up in the morning? Why you got to why you gotta fast and all? You don't have to do that. You believe in God. You be a good person. And it's like, I have to because, like, look at all the things that Allah Subhanahu Wa does for me. Doesn't he deserve that mm -hmm. back, you know? And that connects with mm -hmm. me. I never saw, not out of the state of Christians don't have that. Because I know there are some Christians who think that way. Like, I think my mom thinks that way. Like, very much so. But I don't know a lot of them. A lot of the Christianity that I study, and it was more so about the feeling. You know what I mean? And it was all like, mm -hmm. hey, um, if you do this, you're going to feel better. Or, you know, Go drink, have this holy water, they're going to splash on your head, you'll feel better. I'm going to hit you on the head, you're going to fall out, you're going to feel better. Like, it was all feelings. And not to say that stuff doesn't happen or doesn't work, but I wasn't just looking for a feeling. I wanted correct belief, too. Yeah. So the actual, the idea that mm. one plus one plus one equals one, that didn't make sense to me. I never understood that, you know? So, um, you know. All right, so what story in Islam you think touches you the most? Like, what's the most, the one that had an impact on you the most? It could be the, from the Sierra, the Quran, anything. You like the system of fit? Oh, yeah, I love fit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, what's the, what fiqh. grabs you the most? Oh, what grabs me the most? Yeah. Um, yeah, fit does it for me. Why but, fit, though? Why the Islamic jurisprudence? Why that? Because I'm a logic guy. So, everything is... For me, I like organization, and everything is X's and O's for me. So I don't do things just based off my feelings. You know what I mean? So fit does it for me, because then, if you usually if you explain the rules to me of a game, then I'll figure out how I can play within those rules. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I like about studying fit. But to sew with too, like I love to sew with, but you know that's not something that I don't think people ever master. But something like fic, like I, you can learn fic, and then. Why do you think to to sell with the spirituality part? Why do you think? What do you mean? Many people haven't mastered it. Well, I'm just some people that do, but many yeah. people don't because I mean, you. This is like psychology. You you're against yourself. You're learning about yourself, and that's an ongoing thing. Right. That's not a. That's not one of those things that you ever conquer. Not to say that you conquer fic, but it's. You know, that's an ongoing self-improvement. Oh, yeah, that's a process it's as a process, time yeah. with Islam. It's like levels. 
there's levels to it. Yeah. But now, but as far as stories, of course the story of the prophets in Islam, like I love this. Yeah, story. but like in that story, right, in his life, is it one particular story that sticks out to you? Like, man, that's that's a beautiful event that took place. Or the prophet said something did something that oh, really yeah. I really All right, thought. so I'll give you an example, right? Um I mean of course all the stories. I know. When I went on Umrah, you know, yeah. Right? And I, I went when, when I went on Umrah two years ago, and the brother who was taking me out, he um, the Battle of Uhud, right? Yeah. When you actually go to the the the, the sites, mm -hmm. that's what connected me to everything. And I mean, I've been Muslim for over seventeen years, two years ago. You know what I mean? But um, actually going there and him, him showing me, hey, this is the Makam. Of so and so and so like I'm like wow so when, when he took me up into Mount Uhud so he takes me up there and he says and I, I put pictures of this on my Facebook but showing me the actual place where the Prophet Zaysan put his face and his hands and hugged Mount Uhud and when you read in in the, in the Syria they talk about how the mm -hmm. mountain hugged him back right and he I got to go to the place like I went right there put my face where his face was and he said this really happened and like stuff like that, that's what like connects me to this and make, really warms my heart. Because sometimes you you be in this world and in this country and in our society yeah. and you kind of forget that this stuff is real. Like sometimes you be reading something. You think it's a fairy tale. You, it's almost like a fairy tale. Yeah. You go and you actually see. Like, all right, one story I'll give you, right? You know how we always read in, in you know, in ID, how... Prophet Isa Islam is going to come back and he fight the Dajjal, right? He fight the Dajjal and that he's going to live a natural, I mean, he's going to live the rest life, of his life out. He's going right. to die a natural death and he's going to ask to be buried next to the Prophet. So he's like, I've read that story a thousand times, right? But then when I went, I went on Umrah, we in Medina, we in the Prophet Islam's Masjid. And in his Masjid, you know, the section of the road, right? Because yeah, where go right, there, where the grill, the, right. Yeah, we go, and the, the guy that's showing me, he said, yeah, and here's where Rasulullah S.A.W. is buried, and here's where Abu Bakr and Sadiq is buried, and there's a spot right there that's for Isa Lay I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like, he said, yeah, that's where he's going to be when he does that. And I'm like, yo, I read that ID, man, it's time to actually see it. It's like, yo, it's for real. Like, that's really going to happen. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, when you outside of the country and you're not actually seeing this stuff, it just sounds like a bunch of fairy tales. Wow. To go, you know, I mean, we, we went to, even though the graves aren't marked because, like, the government there. Yeah, they, the Saudi government destroyed them. Yeah, they destroyed them. But to go and they're like, look, this is where his uncle Hums is buried and this is where, you know, so-and-so. Like, I went to all those places and then... You're like, man, this ain't like this ain't no fairy tale. This, this is not, real. This, this yeah. is real stuff, mm -hmm. and it really mm -hmm. happened. And, and you know, it, it's a reminder to you. I, I like if I could go every single year, I would because you need the reminder, kind of like to bring you back, you know, to to, to earth, like mm -hmm. to ground you. All right. So, what areas of Islam do you think you need improvement on? All of them. <laughs> Everybody knows I need to bite my tongue. Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all. Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's some of the things, yeah, I said, by you being accepting Islam, me too, and a convert, what's some of the things that you think that that should be instituted for new shahadas? Because Man, cause if I do a talk, it's going to be long. But I would like to hear what you guys to say about that. Because you got the same way I was. Man, our people are messed up, bro. Like, yeah. this, we 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 don't. I, I always have a soft spot for people who take shahada. Because when I took, I do too. You know, no. I remember I went to. There was a store in Atlantic City where they had. Um, it was an Islamic store right next door to Master Top. I used to be so excited to go, and I went. And the first time somebody sent me that they said in the barbershop they told me, hey, you need to get Sahih uh, Muslim. 
by that set of hadith. I said, I didn't know what it was. So I went over there and I asked the brother to sell me Sahih Muslim. And he didn't just give me the book and take my money. He said, who told you to get this book? And I said, um, I said, my brother in the barbershop. So then he asked, he said, who's your sheikh? Right? And at the time, I'm a new shot. I didn't know what a sheikh was. So I'm like, my sheikh? So I named Brother Hadi, who was just the barber that worked next to mm-hmm. me. And he, I said, Hadi's my sheikh. I don't know. So he said, all right. Um, he's asking about my min hajj and all this crap. And I'm like, well, I don't <laughs> know what that means. You know what I mean? Like, just give me the book, right? So I got it. Like, I wish that stuff would stop. But, like, we live in a world where it's titles, just, it's titles mm-hmm. and it's just no holds barred. Cause no, we don't have any structure. It's yeah. no structure. And I don't think we're ever going to have it. Now, I'm going to tell you something, right? The Prophet saw this alone for one, is a forgotten student, that he would never leave a new shahada just mm-hmm. out there like that. It's when What it's called is muakha. Muakha meaning he would pair somebody up with another sahab. Mm-hmm. And they usually, that in yeah, they usually mm-hmm. would stay with them for a matter of time. That sunnah is gone. There's nowhere. Mm-hmm. Get, that gives somebody a shot, give them a pamphlet and a kufi, and say, here you go. Yeah, That's it. And, no. and then, here's the problem. A lot of people, the the, the few people who are trying to... Yeah, they work, sincere, they got that zeal. Yeah, they sincere, but the, one of the problems that we have, that sincere person, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So you end up passing on bad habits. So like that experience with me in that bookstore, I didn't go back to the masjid for a year, bro. Like it took me like a year, maybe a year and some change. I went home and I stayed on Google because I, I felt like I wanted to get myself together for the people in the I didn't know I wasn't even thinking about a lot mm-hmm. of the time. It was like, man, I don't want nobody questioning me or laughing because I don't know. Like I, I used to go on Google and I would look up terms like what this <laughs> I didn't know but people talk to you in Arabic you don't know what the hell the word mean and they calling you uh, Habib and I'm like I don't know what none of that stuff I didn't <laughs> <laughs> call me Habibi like what the hell's Habibi like I don't I don't know and so just to get I think that stuff you know like it's trend now like now before it was yeah. that before it was Habib then it was uh, now it's shake. Everybody's mm-hmm. a shake. Some somehow yeah, we say not true. shakes, but that's the yeah, term that they use it. Then it before that was so. beloved, and then it was uh, Saidi. But they yeah, say Saidi now. Yeah. I, yeah. Bro, I had to look up all of that stuff, and this is like in 1999 and 2000. And I used to go. I used to go to Master Takwa. When so when I first started going, the brother took me to Takwa, and I once I got there, I felt like. Wow, this is good. I felt like yeah. motherhood, and you know, I was all cool with people touching my feet and you know, <laughs> so, foot to foot. I'm like, oh, cool, this is great. But I was sitting in the cookbook, <laughs> and, the, and the, the imam he would do half the cookbook in English, and the other half would all be Arabic. And I would sit there and not know what the heck he was talking about. Yeah. And but I, I purposely didn't go to any of the other masters because. I didn't want to be around people that I knew because I just didn't want to feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So. Um, this brother, he, he's, he's dead now, you know, uh, forgive me since, uh, uh, brother James Sharif, that was my homie, I used to cut his hair, and when Master Muhammad first moved to Albany Avenue, he came to the barber shop and he invited me, he said, oh, why, why are you, why are you going to the other man, so why don't you come over here, there's our people, you'll feel comfortable, and I was so scared to go there, and then the first time I went, like, I enjoyed it, cause, like, it was mm-hmm. all in Arabic, like, it was all in English, and I was able to understand what the man was talking about. And I still kind of like kept my distance from people because I didn't know them. But after a while, like people made me feel comfortable. And then I got in there. And then probably after two years, then I thought they was all deviants because people like <laughs> they yeah, corrupted yeah. me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like once you get in and then people start talking and then they had these people, they don't do this right and they don't do that and don't go to that master. And... And you know it's crazy because you new to Islam and then you get tainted with all these other. Uh, you get flooded with all. Yeah, these Yeah, and it's crazy. And um, and you still don't know what's going on. Yeah, but they just know. tell you stay away from this, yeah. stay away from that. And so what happens to me? If somebody tells me to stay away from something, I'm gonna go. That's me. See it. I'm yeah. the same way. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I met you. So everybody said, "Don't go to the Dallas Center. Don't do this." All right, cool. I'm gonna go over there. 
You know what I mean? I went there and I got, you know, comfortable with everybody. And I, I had a rapport with somebody in probably every master after that. Yeah. And then I think in 05 is when I met you, man, man. Mm-hmm. He kind of, you know, I don't want him to toot his horn, cause, you know, but he, he he straightened out all that stuff. And yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. That I, had, that I was confused about mm-hmm. I, with, with him, and then when I met um, I met the brothers from Philly, Hanif and um, Naeem and Khalil. Like when I met them, I, that's when I really started like studying fit. And then once I got into it, once I learned the rules of everything, then that made it. Clear, cause that's I, I, I like structure. So yeah. if we're gonna play a game, you explain. Oh, we're gonna play basketball. You sit me down. Or it's Monopoly. Once I learn the rules, and I understand the rules. Then I'm like, oh, I can do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. You can do this sometimes. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can't do this. And once I figured that out, then I was I went back and looked at everything that I had learned from the time that I did take shot. I had to learn over, and then I understood it. Like, all right, cool. And now I ain't saying like I'm a master at anything, but that's learning your far to line. But mm-hmm. no one ever explained that to me in the mm-hmm. beginning. Like, yo, these are things that you have to learn as soon as you become a Muslim. Yeah, like obligatory now. Yeah, these are obligatory things. And then, mm-hmm. all right, you got that. Now I can navigate my way yeah, life. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? So I wish that... Um, so by you saying that, so what's... If somebody, if people listen to this, what's the first thing you suggest that they should do if they knew something? They should, they, every person needs a method. Mm-hmm. Like, hands down. Like, and one of my teachers. I like, agree with you. Yeah, my, 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 one of the teachers I learned from was a uh, brother, uh, Ennis Wyman, who's, he's the imam at, um, Cuba Master in Philly. And I, in one of the classes, he, he told me, he said, everybody has a method, even if you don't want one. Like you have one. Yeah. And he uh, said, you know, the problem is time he had a myth that. And everybody sat in the class and said, well, who, who is his teacher? Who did he get a man? He said, he learned from Andrew Jabril. That's his method. That was his teacher. That's his shake. And I said, oh, that makes sense. Now, I was, I came up in a time where everybody was, yo, man, you don't take from this people. You don't blind follow. You don't do this. You don't do that. But once he said that to me, it made it clear to me. Like, oh. Because you need a teacher. Yeah, you need, you need mm-hmm. one. You know what I mean? And and so when I met Imam Amin, he's my teacher, and then later on someone else became my teacher. And, but the teaching styles may vary, but the structure is all the same. It yeah, doesn't matter yeah. what method. So I think, one, everybody needs a method. Two, everybody needs it. You know, you need a teacher to teach a method. Yeah, this you know, whole idea of this self being taught yeah. crap, that mm-hmm. I can read books, and that's wrong. Yeah. That's not even traditional Islam. That's mm-hmm. them making something up. Yeah, but then here's the the, the the crazy part of all of this, and this is I learned this the hard way, like really the hard way, probably through like you know from people talking about me through marriage, through all the hard mm-hmm. stuff that I went through. Um, I learned the hard way. All of these things, all is all determined by taqwa first, like thick meth habs get to sow with. None of that stuff exists without taco because the reality is mm-hmm. you you don't have to do none of this stuff. Like, there's nobody, like, like when I went on Umrah, and I never got uh, somebody, like, you know, everybody knows once the van gets called, everybody shuts the business down there. Yeah. Right? But there was one woman, I was walking through the mall, and her key mark came off by accident. And it was just an accident. She was just, I guess the tourist or whatever came off. Everybody in the mall was like, and they did not just looking at her crazy, but rushing to get her chemo off the floor and help her put it back 